Nothing is more familiar than light. It's the moon reflected on a calm ocean, a sparkling diamond, a rainbow, a glowing ember. We take it for granted because it's all around us, but behind everyday appearances lies the big question. What exactly is light? In Greek mythology, the goddess Aphrodite fashioned the human eye out of the four elements, earth, air, fire and water, then lit a flame inside the eye to shine out and make sight possible. According to this explanation, we can't see in the dark because rays from the eye must interact with rays from a source such as the sun. So taught Empedocles in the 5th century BC, and for most Europeans it was a theory good enough to stand for the next 2000 years. Other ancients though came closer to the modern view. The Roman poet and philosopher Lucretius was far ahead of his time when in 55 BC he wrote, The light and heat of the sun, these are composed of minute atoms which when they are pushed off lose no time in shooting right across the interspace of air in the direction imparted by the push. Earlier, Euclid had described the laws of reflection and argued that light travels in straight lines. In about AD 140, Ptolemy found from careful measurements of the positions of stars that light is refracted or bent as it passes through the atmosphere. Most advanced of all before the scientists of the Renaissance was Ibn al-Haytham who lived around the turn of the 10th century in what is now Iraq. He rejected the I-beam idea understood that light must have a large but finite velocity and realized that refraction is caused by the velocity being different in different substances. Those facts had to be relearned in the West several centuries later, but when they had been, a great debate sprang up around light's basic nature that set the stage for the startling revelations of more recent times. By the 17th century, two theories competed to explain the underlying essence of light. Isaac Newton insisted that light is made of particles, or to use the term then in vogue, corpuscles, meaning little bodies. His contemporary, the Dutch physicist Christian Huygens, championed the idea that light consists of waves. Newton's corpuscular theory fitted well with some of his other groundbreaking work on the way objects move. After all, light is seen to travel in straight lines, and how it's reflected by a mirror seems similar to how a ball bounces off a wall. Newton revolutionized optics. He split apart white light with prisms and showed that it's a mixture of all the colors of the rainbow, and he built the first reflecting telescope. But all his thoughts in this field were guided by his belief that light is a stream of little particles. Huygens took the rival view that light is really made of waves, like those that ripple out when a stone is tossed into a lake. The medium through which light waves traveled, Huygens supposed, is an invisible substance called the luminiferous ether, an idea he inherited from his old tutor, René Descartes. Both corpuscular and wave theories could explain perfectly well the reflection and refraction of light. It's true, Newton and Huygens differed in their predictions about the way the speed of light changes as light goes from a less dense medium such as air to a more dense one such as glass. Newton said it should go up, and Huygens believed it should go down. As there was no way of measuring this speed change at the time, however, it couldn't be used as an experimental test. One observation, though, did tilt the scales of 17th century opinion. When light from a faraway source, such as the sun, passes a sharp edge, such as the wall of a house, it casts a sharp-edged shadow. That's exactly what you'd expect of streams of particles traveling on dead straight courses. On the other hand, if light were made of waves, it ought to diffract or spread around corners just as ocean waves wash around the sides of the harbour wall and cast a shadow that was fuzzy edged. The observations of clean edged shadows together with Newton's huge stature in science guaranteed almost unanimous support for the corpuscular view. Then came a sea change. 
early in the 19th century, the balance of opinion started to shift emphatically the other way, and the wave picture of light moved to center stage. The instigator of this shift was Thomas Young, an English physician, physicist, and linguist extraordinaire. The first of ten children of Quaker parents, Young was a precocious youngster of fiercely independent mind, who learned to read at the age of two, knew Latin as a six-year-old, and was fluent in 13 languages while still a teenager. Later he played a key role in unraveling the mysteries of Egyptian hieroglyphics through his deciphering of several cartouches on the Rosetta Stone. But his greatest claim to fame lies with his work in optics. I'll be talking more about the work of Thomas Young and the rise of the wave theory of light in part two.